here's what we're going to do. New topic, right? An interesting thing about all the extension two topics is that they each have a connection to what you've been learning in two year, good morning, and extension one. I think it's really important every time you have a look at um, a topic to think, well, okay, how does this relate to the rest? I'm very aware of the fact that you guys, um, like, because you're learning all of your maths all together, whereas I'm like, oh, I teach a two year class here, and then I teach an extension one class here, etc. You know, you, you kind of have everything all in one sort of pile. Uh, so a classic example of this is that um, in uh, yeah, year 11, actually, we have, they've had tasks recently. And um, the extension students are using a T-result method for a two-unit question. Now, there's no, nothing wrong with that. However, of course, if you get something wrong, it's kind of like, well, I've used the wrong approach for this, and if you've led yourself into problems, the two-unit student never needs to worry about. And that's partly because it's like, I don't really have a handle on what's two unit and what's extension one. Now, you may recall, even though we still call them this, the courses used to be called this. And there were good and bad things about that. Um, I know my brother who went through um, four unit maths, he was back in the day, he was very sad when it's like, no more four unit maths, this, this era is over. Uh, the reason why they did this is because there was an emphasis when there was this change um, to say, look, two, three unit and four unit, right? They're not just more of the same. They're not just like, oh, you, you two unit people, you do some maths, and in three unit, you just do more of it, like there's more stuff to discover, but it's the same difficulty. In changing their names to extension one and extension two, what the Board of Studies is trying to say is, look, these are not just more stuff, this is qualitatively more difficult stuff, right? So that's what makes it extension. So I thought um, I would take the courses, sorry, the topics that we've been through, um, and look through, well, what's the relationship between two unit, three unit stuff? Uh, two unit extension one stuff, I should say, and extension two. Now, it's taken me years to try and wrap my head around this, and we're kind of far enough into the course that in fact I'm not just going to do the topics that you have already done, I'm actually going to give you a little bit of a teaser um, of what's what's ahead, okay? I'm usually pretty against spoilers, but when I looked at what I could potentially be spoiling, I'm like, nah, I think I feel comfortable doing this. So, don't feel like you need to write this, good morning, except for maybe the last column of this three column table. This is half of it. So, here's what we've done so far in extension two, right? Now, what, the way you can see I've arranged it is we've got all these two unit and extension one topics, and these ones feed into an extension two topic, yeah? <coughs> then I wanna talk about what's new and what's different. Now, some of this you already know because we've looked at these topics already. Complex numbers is where we kicked off, right? Which is a hugely fun topic, partly because it brings together these huge, massive, you know, sort of building blocks into unit and extension one. Um, and from K to 10, honestly. So it's kind of the culmination of so much in mathematics. Real functions, plane geometry, tree dimension functions. They're all of the big branches of mathematics we've been focusing on, with the exception of calculus. Uh, and that's because... Uh, Calculus with um, complex functions is actually a whole new thing, which I hope some of you guys get to discover um, at uni. It's actually given, it's so, it's such a new thing, it gets given a new name, it's called analysis. So anyway, that's, that's the, the parts of maths in two unit one that lead into complex numbers. And the idea that was different was, well, let's just think about the idea that a number doesn't just exist on a line, but it exists on a plane, right? Therefore, you can think of it, good morning. Uh, as a set of a number has a set of coordinates. It's got two parts to it. Um, you can think of a number as a vector because it not just has a quantity, a scalar quantity, but you can think of it as having a direction as well. Right? So that was what was new, what was different from this over this. All of these, when we say real functions, what we mean is one-dimensional numbers and all of the ways you can put them into a function and get things out. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we looked at graphs. Now graphs is one of the um, one of the most sort of like flowing in, like some people don't really see a huge distinction between these two, but we took everything we knew about functions, we took our understanding of calculus, stationary points, the behavior of a graph, and then we, we put them together, we combined them in lots of different ways, and we transformed it in new and interesting ways, like not just shifting and that kind of thing, not just stretching, but um, you know, squaring graphs, cubing, taking the square root, reciprocal, etc. Uh, then we came into this year, and we kicked off the year, good morning, with conics. Now, I think you guys know, this is where conics came from, 
right? Uh, all of the conic sections we actually have looked at as two unit at extension one students. We just didn't know that they were conic sections. So the big new idea was that all of these, we call them algebraic curves because they're curves that are, that their expressions are, their equations are all come up through, through algebraic uh, means as opposed to log, sine, those kinds of functions. That's not algebra. Uh, we mean multiplication, addition, subtraction, powers, etc that they're all related in this incredible way through this double code structure. And that was really cool, that was quite amazing. And then we dug into all the implications of that, uh, especially with uh, parametrics, that was part of the thing. Uh, now, the last extension, sorry, not the last, the second last extension two topic that we did, of course, polynomials, which unsurprisingly leads on from the two to extension one topic called polynomials. Mm -hmm. um, but what we dug into, if you recall, we looked at the fundamental theorem of algebra, Right? We looked at, therefore, uh, multiplicity of roots, and that's like stuff that you already knew, but it was kind of digging deeper into what a polynomial is. And then we sort of also went past, well, now we know what complex numbers are, so we can deal with polynomials in the complex field. And we looked at partial fractions, which came out of polynomial identities. Why do we do that again? Partial fractions. To help with the next topic, right? So now, okay, I don't want to go too far. So now... This was our last one. Again, unsurprisingly, extension two integration follows from two unit extension one integration. Uh, the real characteristic of that topic was if we have all of these like new tools, right? That, that allows us, it opens up all these more difficult integrators that we can deal with, right? So we call them sort of advanced techniques. Um, substitutions like the T results. You met the T results before, but we never really used it in the context of integration. Uh, there were some really hard substitutions. You didn't get given the substitution most of the time. You just had to work it out. Uh, and of course, integration by parts, that gave you recurrence relations, etc. cetera. Okay? So, quality hats. This is where it starts to get a bit more new. Okay? Now, do you remember... How uh, up here in complex numbers, we had this idea of numbers being, well, we added a dimension to numbers, okay? That's from two unit extension one to extension two. You get exactly the same pattern, kinda, when you move into mechanics, which is just another word for extension two motion. Uh, the kinds of motion we're gonna look under here are mainly uniform circular motion, uh, motion on a banked track when you're like going around a curve. Um, as opposed to straight line motion, things moving up, down, or left to right, Simple harmonic motion, which is still straight line, but moving in a predictable, oscillating way. And then projectile motion, which finally adds in a two-dimensional sort of model. It's like I can go up, down, but I can go left, right as well. <coughs> what mechanics does, just like complex numbers, is to say, well, let's add another dimension to this. And let's see what happens, right? So circular motion is in three dimensions. You've got all of these different axes of motion, the axes that we're used to experiencing in daily life. Okay? Now, um, harder extension one, good morning. I kind of been touching on a little bit uh, because we noticed we would have dealt with this under induction when we did it as an extension one topic. I just kind of stuck them in and didn't tell you they were extension two. We haven't touched the circle geometry yet. But again, same idea, we're gonna go <coughs> further, okay? We wanna take all of these things together. And by the way, I actually like to call them harder proofs rather than harder extension one, even though that's what the topic is called. Because you have a look at all those things on the left, they are all about the nature and um, the rigor of proof, right? Mathematical proof, we said this under reduction, is unlike any other kind of proof in human endeavor, right? Scientific proof, historical proof, they have places, but they are not sure like mathematical proof is, okay? So that's seven out of eight topics, uh, including some ones which we haven't really done yet. So that leaves us with today's topic. Now in what, or you know, the next couple of weeks, what makes extension two volumes, extension two volumes, okay? Now before I show you, I just want to sort of rewind a little bit. And I want you to see just over here, if you sort of take a broad overview, right? There's kind of two themes that come up again and again and again as you move from two to extension one stuff to extension two. Here are the two themes. Number one, we dig deeper into the nature of what things are. So polynomials was a perfect example of that, right? The fundamental theorem of algebra is something which actually animates a lot of what you learn in two-unit and extension one. Like when we're doing quadratics and you talk about the discriminant, and we talk about positive definite, negative definite, etc. All of that is trying to deal with, well, you're supposed to have two roots in a quadratic. That's what the fundamental theorem of algebra is all about, right? Um, all that stuff with, um, you know, alpha and beta and the relationships between roots and coefficients. 
we just want to understand more deeply. Like there are there are things below the surface which we didn't sort of understand as two extension one students, but we kind of lifted the veil a little bit and saw, hey, there's more stuff underneath here. That was the first thing that extension two topics do routinely. The second thing is. We go up, right? We look and we say, well, what else is out there, right? What other new kinds of things or um, what kinds of harder things, right, are going on? Where else can we take these, these skills? Where can we sort of launch off to, right? So there's this kind of downward movement and this upward movement. Um, sorry, I should have mentioned, the conics topic is another good example of going deeper. It's like, look, all these curves are related. You never knew they were related, but they were all along. <laughs> Now what I love about volumes, which I think sometimes has a bad reputation, but it's a great topic, I really love it. What I love about volumes is it does both of those things. It does both of those things. It goes down, it goes deeper, it lifts the veil on ideas that were already there but we haven't looked at in detail. And on the basis of that, right, going back to first principles, which you should think might be going backwards, you actually open up all these new kinds of volumes you can look at. Um, we're going to revise what we can do in two unit volumes. I will say there is actually no such thing as extension one volumes. There's no volumes content that's specific to the extension one course. So we're going to look again at what we know from two unit volumes, but there are only a very, very small number of volumes we can handle with those techniques, right? So if we dig deeper into what's really going on, there are all kinds of weird and interesting shapes we can look at, okay? So I hope that gives you a bit of a, like this is what the character, this is what makes it, it's not four unit. It's extension two. You're doing something different over here. 